Hello, my dear friends. So we are almost approaching the end part of this lesson. And you remember that we have been studying about the agriculture that is practiced throughout the world. Different type of crops, different types of cultivation, and multiple cultivation, commercial cultivation, and so on. And in India, you know, more than half of the people are engaged in this agricultural activities. And in spite of that, we will find our agricultural production is not improving. It is somewhat remains the same. And the reason is that we still depend on the old technology. Or our farm, our farms are very small. And a big farm can produce better results. Small farms will be very much limited. That's why the Indian farmers are still going on struggling. So let us, for our case study, take two farms. One from India, another one from USA. And let us come here and see how the result comes out. What is the uh, difference it makes? What are the, let us come here and see. So you can take your text number, page number 66. Sorry, 46. The last paragraph. First, we will study about a farm in India, in Uttar Pradesh. A farm. So, there is a small village, Adilabad, in Gazipur district of Uttar Pradesh. So, we are going to choose a village in Uttar Pradesh called Adilabad, and it is in Gazipur district and the farmer's name is Munalal Munalal and he is a small farmer in this village who has farmland of about 1.5 hectares so he has got a farmland and the total area of the farmland is 1.5 hectares and I hope you know what is a hectare so one hectare means a square area, a square area which has got 100 meters long on all the four sides. So 100 into 4, that is the one hectare. So here he has got one and a half hectares. So that is not a very big area. So we already said that he is a small farmer and therefore he has only this small plot of land. His house is in the main village and he purchases high yielding varieties of seeds from the market every alternate year. So he is introducing the high yielding variety of seeds and he buys it from the market every alternate year. So one year he will buy the high yielding variety of seeds and the next year he will use the same seed again. Then after all, that again he will go and buy new seeds. That is what he was practicing. So every year he is not using high yielding variety of seeds. Only on alternative years he is using. Then the land is fertile and he grows at least two crops in a year which are normally wheat or rice and pulses. So the man he enjoys a very good soil and therefore he is able to practice multiple crops, multiple crops. So first thing he will plant rice, then he will plant wheat, then he will plant pulses. So multiple crops he is practicing and it is because his soil is very fertile. Then the farmer takes advice of his friends and elders as well as the government agricultural offices regarding farming practices. So since uh, in order to keep himself update, he consults his friends, other farmers are there, how they are cultivating. Or he also will consult the agricultural officers appointed by the government and he will inquire with them, discuss with them about how to improve his farm, farm and the production capacity and so on. Then 
He takes a tractor on rent for plowing his field. Though some of his friends still use traditional method of using blows for plowing. So this man, he, as we said, he is not a very rich farmer. So he does not have a tractor. He has to borrow from somebody and pay money, rent charge he has to pay. And some of his friends are still using the traditional method of plowing the field with blocks or buffaloes. So it takes such a long time. But this man, Munala, is using a tractor. Though it is not his own, he is borrowing for rent and he is using it. Therefore, he is able to finish up his work much before others finish. Then, there is a tubal in the nearby field where he takes on rent to irrigate his field. So, near his field there is a borewell is there and from there he will take water and that also he is taking on rent. The borewell does not belong to him, it belongs to somebody else. But in order to use that one, in order to pump out water from there, he has to pay money to the owner. So for tractor, he has to give money. For using water for irrigation, he has to pay money. And so the farmer is very poor. He does not have anything on his own. Everything he is depending upon others. Then the Munala also has got two buffaloes and few hens. So apart from this cultivation, he is also growing a few animals, two buffaloes and few hens. He sells milk in the cooperative store located in the nearby town. So the buffaloes are giving milk and he will go and sell this milk in the cooperative town. Then he is a member of the cooperative society which also advises him on the type of fodder for his animals and safety measures to protect the health of the livestock and artificial insemination. So, since he is a member of this cooperative society where he is selling the milk, they also give him a lot of advice. He will sell, he, they will tell him which food is good for the animals, which food is more healthier and so So he will listen to their advice and act upon it so that he can buy good food for his buffaloes and they will be healthy and they will be giving more milk. And also uh, they will uh, say how much, what food to give to the other livestock like chicken and so on. Everything they will give. Even artificial insemination also they will give so that the uh, animals will give better calves. They will have better a baby and they will be able to improve their milk production and so on. Then all the members of the family help him in various farm activities. So in order to help him he is not hiring much workers from outside. He himself and along with his family members, his wife and his children, they are the one working in the farm. And sometimes he takes credit from a bank. So sometimes the money is not enough to pay to the workers or pay the rent for tractor uh, for borewell and so on. Then what does he do? He will buy or he will borrow some money from the bank. Since majority of the farmers do not have storage facilities, they are forced to sell the produce even when the market is not favorable to them. So most of the places where farmers are there, they have a storage facility. They can store inside this house, it will not get spoiled. It is nicely protected from uh, heat, cold and so on. It's a very uh, nice place for storing vegetables and other products. But here for Munalal and his friends in this village, there is no storage facility. And therefore what happens? They cannot preserve the pulses and so it will get rotten very fast. So they are forced to sell it. Sometimes the price in the market may be very low. So they cannot keep. We will wait till the price increases. If you say that, then uh, things will get rotten because storing facility is not there. So whatever price is there, even if it is low also they immediately sell away their things. Otherwise it will get rotten. So they. That is another drawback that these farmers are facing 
they have no storage facility. And in recent years, the government has taken some steps to develop storage facility. So the government has seen the struggle of these farmers, how much they are struggling uh, due to lack of uh, storage facility, due to lack of low price, uh, due to low price, and the farmers are really struggling. And therefore, the government has taken some steps that they will build the house for storing the products and so so if that comes true then certainly these farmers are going to benefit they will benefit from um, selling with a high price and they will be able to increase their products so that is the situation of an Indian farmer the land is not very big and the farmers are very poor they don't have enough uh, facilities or enough machines tools everything they have to borrow from others when they don't have sufficient money to buy seeds and fertilizers, they have to go and borrow loan from the bank. And they don't have a good place for storing their things. They have to sell it immediately, otherwise it would get spoiled. So a lot of problems are there. So that's why the farmers are remaining poor. They are not able to improve because facilities are not there. The modern technology is not available to them and so So they are still struggling. Now let us go to USA, at least in your imagination you can go to USA and I go after your studies and so you will be landing up in USA for higher studies or for working and so on. So make it a point to see different places, experience different places and see how they are living and so on. That will help you to uh, get inspiration and implement the same thing in your own place. Well. So now let us study about a farm that is in the USA. So the average size of a farm in the USA is much larger than that of an Indian farm. So we said the Indian farm of Munalal, he has got only one and a half hectares of fields. But an American farmer in America, he will have much much bigger farm, much much bigger area than the Indian farmers are having. A typical farm size in the USA is about 250 hectares. See the difference? In India they are having only one and a half hectares, but in USA one farmer is having 250 hectares. So how many times more? No? So you can imagine then how much he will be able to produce, how much profit he will be able to make and so on. So, that is one thing, Indian farmers are still struggling, their areas are very small. And the farmer generally resides in the farm. So the Munalal, he was staying in the village and his farm is away. But in America what they do? The farm is so big, so huge, 250 hectares and the farmer makes his house inside this farmland and he stays inside the farm. And some of the major crops grown are Corn, soybean, wheat, cotton, sugar beet, and so on. So here they, since the area is very big, they can cultivate several types. One area they will cultivate maybe wheat, another area they will cultivate another thing, pulses, maize, and so on. So different, different cultivations are there. So they produce a variety of things. It is possible because the land is very big. The farm is very big. And the farmer's name is Joe Horan. And he is a farmer in the Midwest USA in the lower state owns about 300 hectares of land. So the farmer that we are going to uh, refer in particular is John Joe Horan. And he, is, he has got 300 hectares of land. So normally it is a 250 hectares for the farmer's average. But this particular farmer has got 300 hectares. So that is a huge area gain. And he grows corn on his field after making sure that soil and water resources meet the needs of this crop. So he wants to cultivate corn, maize in his field. And he knows what are the requirements for the growth of this corn 
what is what should be the quality of the soil how much the water should be there how much humidity should be there so he will test the soil and find out what is the quality of my soil if the quality is less then he will add more minerals more minerals more water and make the soil fertile so he is not simply taking chance he is planning out nicely and he is doing all the scientific testing all that and then he is uh, putting down the seeds he <coughs> adequate measures are taken to control pests that they can damage the crop so he knows that when he put the seeds there will be lot of pests will be there lot of creatures worms will be there so he will take adequate control sufficient control by putting pesticides and so he will control the pests then from time to time he sends the soil samples to a soil testing laboratory to check whether the nutrients are sufficient or not so from time to time he will take out some soil and send to the laboratory to do the testing whether all the minerals are there or not whether anything more to be added or not so he is not just taking for granted oh last year only i put manure let me uh, just let it go on. so he is not willing to take chance he wants to do everything in a very particular systematic way that is how the farmer has to do in india we saw the farmer is buying the seed one year he will buy next year he will not buy then following year again he will buy so he is taking chance he is not doing any math, proper scientific method he is just uh, surviving but here in usa he is a professional farmer and he takes a service from different people soil testing all that he does then the results help job padan to plan a scientific fertilizer program so after testing the soil he will now get the results and then he will realize what are the elements lacking in the soil what are the minerals lacking in the soil accordingly he will arrange a program and add what is lacking there and make the soil very fertile for the growth of corn then his computer is linked to the satellite which gives him a precise picture of his field so he is very much advanced in his office in his side of his house there is a computer is there and that computer is connected to the satellite so from the satellite from the top they will take photo and that photos can be seen in the computer so it is a 300 hectare area it is not impossible every day for him to go and see everywhere so the photos are taken from the top by satellite and that photos are received into the computer so by sitting in his office he can see different parts of his farm different parts of his garden whether any wild animals are entering or not whether any side is attacked by insects or not or any side is growing growth is poor or not everything can be seen from his office itself so that is another advantage the highest technology is used by the farmer and this helps him to use chemical fertilizers and pesticides wherever they require so by sitting in his office itself he can know which are the areas not growing properly so that area need to be given fertilizer or which are the areas attacked by the pests so he will put pesticide there and clean it up so every day don't have to go and look by himself but he will sit in his office and see every area in the computer then he uses tractors seed drills leveler combine harvester and thresher to perform various agricultural operations so in the case of indian farmer we so he along with his wife and children are working he has no money to buy uh, machine tractor and so everything is borrowing and for that he has to pay money and so on but in the case of an american farmer everything is done by machine so he buys lot of machine and that is for himself he because he needs 
mission every day to do the work. So what are the types of missions that he has got? He has got missions for the plowing, the tractors are there, then seed drills for putting the seeds that also systematically in a proper way will be put by this mission. Then leveler is there, leveler, leveler is there leveling the land. So that leveler also is important. Then combine harvester and thresher. So that is another measure, another machine combined for two purposes. One is for harvesting and after the harvesting it can be used for threshing also. So to remove the corns. Then grains are stored in the automated grain storage or dispersed to market agencies. So after the harvest is over, this farmer has got the opportunity to store. He can decide whether I will store my grain inside the godown, inside the storeroom or I will sell it in the market. So he can make the choice. And what choice will he make? Suppose if the price is high, straight away he will sell it to the market. And there are agencies are there. Just to inform them enough, they will come and take your grain. So if the price is high, he will sell it immediately. If the price is not high, he will keep in the storeroom for some more time. And so that when the price is increasing, he will be able to uh, sell it. So it is not just to give away free or take the chance, but he will make sure that all the hard work that he has put in he is getting back the reward and making maximum profit. That is what the farmer will do and he will, his aim will be that. And the farmer in USA works like a businessman and not like a person farmer. So in America to be a farmer means it is not a simple thing. He acts like a businessman because he is just controlling everything. So many people will be at his disposal. So many workers will be there for using the tractor, farming and so on. Then he will be consulting the soil agency. He will be consulting the marketing agent. So, so many people will be there and he will be discussing with them everything and he will know about the market condition, whether the price is good or not, whether the price is going to improve or not, or whether the price is going down or not. Everything he will be able to know by just by sitting there in his office and he can ring up to different people and he can see the weather, the quality of the soil, everything. So, the USA farmer is much much more advanced in technology, in machines, in his ideas and so on. So an Indian farmer cannot even think about having a, uh, having a big farmland of 300 hectare area and even if he has got a small area, he does not have enough money to buy the machines or hire the workers and so on. He does not even have facility for irrigation, everything has to depend on others and therefore the production also will be low and the farmer will continue to remain poor. While the farmer in USA because of his systematic working he is able to make a lot of profit and he is able to get good harvest and sell it and make a lot of money he will become richer and richer. So being a farmer is not something bad but what we need is we need to have idea we need to implement our ideas and we need to proceed ahead. And the USA farmers are able to do that and they have got the benefit as well. So my dear friends, we have come to the end of this lesson about agriculture. And let us see a few exercises that are given at the end of this lesson. See the first one. That is, answer the following questions. I will send it to you in the group. Then take the second one. Take the correct answer. First one says, horticulture means, what is the meaning of horticulture? We saw different types of culture, horticulture, agriculture, sericulture, fishiculture and so on. So horticulture means, growing of fruits and vegetables, growing of fruits and vegetables. Then second one, golden fiber refers to, so what is golden fiber? We said in the other day, what is known as golden fiber? The jute is known as golden fiber jute. Then third one. 
leading producers of coffee which country is the leading producer of coffee it is the brazil brazil gives the highest production uh, highest coffee produced in brazil so the rest we will uh, give you and what you need is uh, read the lessons again from the beginning till the end so that the ideas that you have left to your mind will come back to you and you will be able to gather the ideas together and will be able to um, form all the ideas from the proper way and will be able to understand so we come to the end of this lesson so thank you for listening have a nice day